In this video, you're gonna learn how to graph exponential functions using transformations. We're gonna go through three examples together. Once you get the hang of this, see if you can try some of these problems on your own. Let's dive in. So when we talk about an exponential function, it's a function that's in this form, y equals a times b to the x minus h power plus k. And when you look at this b, this is what's referred to the base. It's below the exponent here. And when the base is greater than zero, and the base can't be one, but if it's greater than zero, it tells us that it's an exponential growth function, meaning it's going up to the right like this. It's gonna have a horizontal asymptote right here, uh, like so. If the base is between zero and one, it's gonna be an exponential decay function, meaning it's going down to the right, it's decaying. Now, the a value, this coefficient here, when you take the absolute value of a, if it's greater than one, then we say it's like a vertical stretch, like you're pulling it in the y direction vertically. But if the absolute value of a is in between zero and one, say like a half, then we say it's a vertical shrink, okay? So you're squeezing it vertically. And if the a value is less than zero, meaning it's negative, it's gonna reflect it over the x-axis. So it's a reflection. The h and k are gonna shift the graph. So this one's gonna shift it uh, left and right, and the k is gonna shift it up and down. Just kind of keep in mind though, this x minus h, like if it's x minus two, it actually shifts it to the right two. If it's x plus two, it goes to the left two. So it's like the opposite of the sign. Whereas the k value, if that's plus two, it does go up to positive two. If it's negative two, it does go down two. And then y equals k is gonna be where our horizontal asymptote is. So let's take a look at the first example. y equals two times three to the x minus one plus two. Let's start by focusing on the parent function. The parent function is just this part right here, the equation y equals three to the x power. Let's make a table just on that core function. Pick some easy small numbers like negative one, zero, and one. Three to the negative one is one third because when you raise something to the first power, it's itself, but a negative, you take the reciprocal. That's how we get the one third. Three to the zero, anything to the zero power is always one and then three to the first power, anything to the first power is itself. So this is kind of like our basic function, but then the two is gonna be a vertical stretch by a factor of two, which is gonna multiply all these y values by two. So we're gonna have two thirds, two, and six. I'll just cross out those old y values. And then the minus one is gonna shift the graph, not a minus one, but to the right one. It has like the opposite effect when it's grouped with the x like that. So going right one means we're gonna be adding one to all these x values, cross out the old ones, and then the plus two is gonna shift the graph up two, which means I'm gonna add two to all the y values. So this is gonna be two and two thirds, four and eight. I'll cross out those old y values. Now if we plot these points, zero, two and two thirds would put us right here. 1, 4 put us right here, and 2, 8 would put us right about here. And notice this uh, 2 here, this is our horizontal asymptote, y equals 2. So you can draw that line in there. And your graph is going to be an exponential growth. It's going up to the right like that. Uh, and it's approaching the horizontal asymptote as you go to the left. So the domain would be all real numbers. The graph goes to the left forever and ever and to the right forever and ever. And our range is gonna be y is greater than two. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, in example number two, we have y equals negative one half to the x plus two power minus one. Now to graph this one, let's focus in on the parent function, just the b to the x power. So in this case, we're looking at just this part here, y equals one half to the x power. Let's make a table and just pick some easy small numbers, negative one, zero, and one. One half to the negative one, remember that negative exponent, you take the reciprocal, so this is gonna come out to two. One half to the zero, remember anything to the zero power is one, and then anything to the first power is itself, so that's gonna be one half. Now, let's go ahead and Look at this a value here. So the a value is doing what? It's reflecting it over the x-axis because this is negative. When you reflect it over the x-axis, you're multiplying all the y values by negative one. So this is gonna become negative two, negative one, and negative one half. Cross out the old y values. The plus two is gonna shift the graph not to the right two, 
but negative two to the left two. So that means I'm gonna subtract two from all of these x values, cross out the old ones. And then the minus one is gonna shift the graph down one, which is gonna affect the y values. So I'm gonna subtract one from each of these y values, cross out the old ones. Let's go ahead and graph this. So we have negative three, negative three, which is gonna put us right about here. And negative two, negative two, right about here. And negative one, uh, negative one and a half, which is right about here. And then notice uh, this k value, y equals negative one, is gonna be our horizontal asymptote right there. So you can see what's happening is this graph is looking something like this. It's getting closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. Domain is all real numbers, but the range is gonna be y is less than negative one. And our horizontal asymptote here is y equals negative one. Now, originally, see this graph y equals one half to the x? It's an exponential decay function. It would look like this. But then what happened is we reflected it over the x-axis, so now it looks something like this, and then we're shifting it left to down one. That's how we're getting this graph. Let's take a look at one last example. See if you can try example number three on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. Uh, f of x equals one half times four to the x minus three power minus three. How would you graph that one? Well, if I was gonna do it, I would start off by focusing in on this parent function, y equals four to the x power. So if we Go ahead and do some easy numbers, negative one, zero, and one. Four to the negative one is one fourth. Four to the zero is one. Four to the first is four. That's our parent function, right? Now let's look at the transformations. Let's, now you wanna make sure, this is one thing I haven't pointed out, but that the k value, this uh, negative three over here, you're gonna to wanna to do that transformation last. You could do the horizontal shift next, or you could do this uh, vertical uh, stretch or shrink next. Either one is fine. You're gonna get the same result. I'm gonna go ahead and do this vertical uh, shrink by one half, which is gonna multiply all the y values by one half. Cross out the old ones. Then the x minus three is gonna shift the graph. Remember the one group of the x has the opposite effect. It's gonna shift it right three, which means I'm gonna add three to all the x values. Cross out the old ones. The minus three is gonna shift the graph down three, which means I'm gonna subtract three from all these uh, y values. So that's gonna be, let's see, negative one, negative two and a half, and negative two and seven eighths. So if I plot these points, let's see, we have two and negative two and seven eighths, which is right about there, uh, three and negative two and a half, which is right about here, and four, negative one, which is right about here, and we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative three, that's this k value. Okay, so you can see that the graph here now is looking something like this. And notice we know it's an exponential growth because our base is greater than one. The one half was like a vertical shrink, and then we shifted it right three and down three. And so that's how we're getting the graph there. The domain is gonna be all real numbers. The range is gonna be y is greater than negative three. So great job if you're able to follow these three examples. If you want more practice graphing exponential functions, follow me over to a previous video I did right there and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.